May we meet in the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. Hello and welcome to another Sunday service from the parish of Central Swansea. In just a moment, I'm going to read for you the collect for this day and then uh, an extract from the Gospel according to St Mark. And then I want to offer a reflection on three childlike virtues, those of dependency, naivety and innocency. So I'll start with the collect for this 16th Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O Lord, we beseech you mercifully to hear the prayers of your people who call upon you, and grant that they may both perceive and know what things they ought to do, and also may have grace and power faithfully to fulfil them. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. So here is the Gospel appointed for this Sunday, uh, the Gospel according to St Mark, the ninth chapter, beginning at the 30th verse. They, want, they went on from there and passed through Galilee. Jesus did not want anyone to know it, for he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying, and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another about who was the greatest. Jesus sat down, called the twelve, and said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all, and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me, and whoever welcomes me welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. So what does it mean to be great? In that gospel, the disciples of Christ are caught debating among them who was the greatest. Was it a case, I wonder, of who had the greatest strength? Did the disciples arm wrestle to settle the matter? Or perhaps they were arguing who was the greatest fisherman. Fishermen have always loved to tell tales, to boast about how big the fish were that they caught out at sea. Perhaps it was even a case of who was the greatest thinker? Was there a race to complete the Sunday Times cryptic crossword? Well, all right, probably not that one. But greatness is usually measurable. Countries are ranked by their GDP, schools by their GCSE results, Olympic teams by their medal halls. Greatness implies something worth both boasting about, something that puts you on the map, something that will be mentioned in your obituary, read out at your eulogy. Muhammad Ali declared himself to be the greatest of all time. Donald Trump promised to make America great again. Strength, erudition, wealth, whatever it is, to be great is to strive to be the best. So it was into that context, into this display of bragging machismo, that Jesus did something exceptionally strange. He sat down, called his twelve disciples to join him, and said, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all, and servant of all. That is, to use a colloquialism, a bit of a head-scratcher. Is the person who waits on the royal table greater than the king? One of them is greeted by a fanfare and leads armies into battle. The other one sleeps on the floor and eats scraps from the table. 
But if that weren't enough to say the servant is greater than the master, Jesus goes one step further. Demonstrating his knack for showmanship, Jesus plucks out a small child from the crowd and places it in the midst of his bickering disciples. Whoever welcomes one such child in my name, he says, welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, welcomes not me, but the one who sent me. In other words, it's not enough merely to be servant-hearted, and then presumably debate about who was better at serving. It is in welcoming, a very particular word, welcoming a child, a child such as that, that Almighty God is made present. Children in the ancient Near East, as in many societies, were at the bottom of the social pile. They were dependent and therefore unproductive. They were naive and therefore lacked wisdom. They were innocent and therefore not to be taken seriously. Yet it was precisely these three qualities, dependence, naivety and innocence, that Jesus implies need to be cultivated in his disciples. It is those childlike weaknesses that Jesus says are actually virtues, and divine virtues at that, virtues which make God present to his people. Dependency, naivety and innocence. Let's take a little moment to dig deeper into what that might mean. Firstly, dependency. Children are totally dependent on those who look after them. One of the most poignant things about being a parent is having such complete responsibility for the welfare of another. Perhaps Jesus is directing us to something important by placing that young child in the middle of his squabbling disciples. Perhaps he is saying that their greatness is not determined by their strength or capability or productivity. The Christian faith tells us that not one of us, not a single person on this earth, is strong enough or smart enough or productive enough to save themselves. Instead, we are completely dependent on the saving grace of God. Think of how our gospel reading begins. Jesus is leading his band of disciples through Galilee and talking to them about how he is to die and rise again. This debate about who is the greatest is taking place on the very road to Jerusalem. It is taking place en route to that city where Jesus will be betrayed and deserted by all of his disciples and nailed to the cross. We modern day disciples are no more capable of saving ourselves than were Peter, Andrew, James, John and the rest. Like them, we are utterly dependent on the saving blood which Christ shed on the cross. The disciples have failed to listen to Jesus. They have failed to heed his words. Are we the same? Do we take it seriously that we are utterly dependent on God's grace for our salvation? Do we come to church with joy, joy in our hearts for what God has achieved for us and sorrow for our own lack of faith? Total dependence on God's saving power. That is the first lesson of that little child. Then there is the quality of naivety. Children do not strive to be what they are not. Children do not social climb. They do not get embarrassed by what they look like or how they sound. They are comfortable in themselves. That is the second rebuff to the disciples' argument about greatness. A toddler is not striving for greatness. He or she simply is. Christians believe that all men and all women are made in the image of God and that this is the source of our dignity. 
to welcome children and to be childlike ourselves is to be at ease with who we are. It is to know that God does not rank us by academic achievement or physical strength or business acumen. He loves us for who we are and he asks us to treat each other as his own sons and daughters. So that's naivety. And finally then, there is that quality of innocence. In particular, I'm thinking of the innocent delight that children uh, have, uh, delight in what is good in the world. I'll illustrate this, if you'll indulge me, with a short story. I try to pray with Henry, uh, my son, and when he was very little he had no choice in the matter. I would say the offices of morning prayer and evening prayer, and he would lie asleep or listen. Now, however, it's very hard to get Henry to sit still. And so when I walk him into nursery in the morning, I tend to say out loud a short uh, office of, of matins or, or even song. Uh, when I was doing this the other day, I was beginning, O oh Lord, open thou our lips. But Henry was far too excited, far too excited to be out in creation, to pay any attention to my versicles and canticles and psalms. Every bird, every dog, every insect, every lamppost, he greeted with a joyful hello, and then waved a no less joyful goodbye. Like God at the point of creation, Henry looked about him and saw that the world was good. Now I share this with you not simply because I'm a doting father, but because I took from it a lesson, and perhaps it's something of the lesson that Jesus was teaching his disciples. God is not worshipped and adored only in liturgy and prayer and preaching. If each of us delighted in life with the innocence of a child, then we would be living like Adam and Eve before the fall, in harmony with one another and in unity with God. Dependence, naivety and innocent delight. These are the three antidotes to the doomed human quest for greatness. The lesson of that little child is that we do not need to brag and boast and strive for greatness. Simply to trust in God, to know that we are his beloved children and to delight in that knowledge. That is true wisdom and true greatness. So I'd like to conclude with a prayer entitled Simplicity. So let us pray. Grant me, O oh my God, the grace of simplicity, singleness and candour of heart, tranquil certainty in faith, joyous sincerity in conversation goodwill and trust towards all, white garments these, of the children of Christ. Make me so to repose on thee, that I be not disturbed by the demands and surprises of today, nor by the threats of tomorrow, nor study the conduct or intrigues of others, nor serve at all the standards of the world. Let me not ask to comprehend thy motions and measures, but pursue them, when thou showest them, without question and with joy. Quietly may I love, quietly obey, quietly pray, quietly and honestly bear my witness, generously think and speak, never seeking to impress or be clever. Thou, O Father, hast set a little child in our midst. Make me a child in soul, a child in purity, a child like that holy child, more and more and evermore. Amen. And so let's join together in the prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. 
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. May God grant to each of us those gifts of dependency, innocence and naivety, that we may repose in him. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with us and remain with us always. Amen. <laughs>